G'day guys, Dave Lee coming at you once again from Dan Under with this very special edition of my Blu-ray and DVD collection series. That's right, Christmas is just around the corner and it's time for everybody to pull out all their favourite holiday and Christmas movies. I know I certainly will be and funnily enough, I've actually held back all of my Christmas films and uh, specials and little sets here from all my previous collection videos so I could put together this very special Christmas edition of my Blu-ray collection series. I'm very excited to get into this. There is quite a ton of titles here to get through, so let's get into it. Alright, so as I said, this is a very special edition of this series. Uh, usually I would just sort of hold up the title and rattle off a couple of names. But I love my Christmas movies, and I know a lot of people out there are always trying to find new Christmas movies to watch around the season, as well as uh, some old favourites of theirs too. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of time with this video. I'm actually going to go through all these titles here one by one. I'm going to give you just, just a little bit of an opinion on each one, talk a little bit about it. I'm not going to spend too much time on each title, I don't want this video to be too long. But we're going to go through it at a reasonable pace and sort of go through all the titles that we have here. We split them up into a couple of little sections here. We've got main holiday movies, we've got classic holiday movies, and then we've got a pile of Disney stuff as well. We're not going to spend too long on the Disney stuff because I've actually already done a Disney Christmas movie video last year. If you'd like to check that out, uh, there'll be a link to that right at the end of this video. Uh, otherwise, check down in the description below. There'll be a little, uh, a little link to head to that video too. Now, before you ask, no, I do not watch all of these movies every single year. There was a time where I got through quite a decent number of these every year. These days though, I, I, I've kind of got sick of watching the same ones over and over and over again, but there aren't just a handful of absolute classics that I have to watch every year. If you're interested in finding out a little bit about what movies I'll be watching this year and how I put together my schedule, I'll be putting up a video in a couple of days time that you can check out as well, and uh, that's a very special video as well. Without further ado, let's get into today's special edition of my Blu-ray and DVD collection series, Christmas Movies. Very excited about this. Let's start from the top. Almost Christmas. This is one that I've watched, I think I don't think I watched it last year, but I watched it a couple of years before that. It's got Paul Giamatti and Paul Rudd, one of my absolute favourites. It's not a classic by any means, it's more of like a dramedy sort of thing, more on the drama side of things. It's not hilarious, it's kind of sad actually. I, I don't think I'll be watching this one this year, but it's a decent movie and it's worth watching at least once, I reckon. Arthur Christmas in 3D. I enjoyed this one, we've watched this the last couple of years and we'll probably put it on this year just for the sake of watching an animation. Uh, it's quite enjoyable little animated film. It's a Sony animated film. I quite enjoy it. I can't remember who's in this, but it's got a decent voice cast. James McAvoy, Hugh Laurie, Bill Nye, Jim Broadbent. Uh, it's an English film, of course. I actually think that's quite charming. I really enjoyed that, and I probably will be watching that again this year. Next up, Bad Santa. Now, this is one of my absolute favourite Christmas movies. It's rude, and it's crude, and I love it. This is usually the movie that we kick off our Christmas season with. Billy Bob Thornton is absolutely fantastic in this, and his portrayal of this character is Probably, probably his best character he's ever played. This came out when I was in early high school and uh, I remember this is one of the first sort of really naughty movies that I watched. It was fantastic. I love this movie. I really, really recommend that. And of course, Bad Santa 2. That's the new one. This has only just come out on Blu-ray this year. It was out in cinemas last year, of course. Haven't watched this one yet, so this is going to be a new addition to the Christmas list this year. I love getting one or two every year that's brand new. Uh, it's always fun to just watch something, something fresh that you haven't watched over and over and over again. So I'm looking forward to seeing Bad Santa 2. From all accounts, it's not as good as the first one, but I'm sure I'll still have fun with that. This one's a bit of an unorthodox Christmas movie. Not a lot of people would really consider this to be a Christmas movie, but uh, this one's for the comic book fans out there. It is Batman Returns. Christmas movie, you ask? Well, yeah, it's set around the holiday season. And pretty much, I think the entire movie is set around Christmas. There's a whole scene where they're lighting the, uh, the Christmas tree in Gotham City, and all of the Penguin's minions jump out of a bunch of, like, Christmas boxes and stuff. So it's very much a Christmas movie. I love not just sticking to the traditional films. You've got to watch one every now and then that's sort of a little bit obscure, a little bit out of the ordinary. And Batman Returns is one fantastic Christmas movie. It's not my favourite of the Batman movies, but, but it's a bit of fun. This is one I don't think I'll ever be watching again. I don't even know really if I'd consider it a Christmas movie, but it's certainly set around Christmas. And that's Carol. Uh, yeah, again, really not a Christmas movie. It's just set during the, the festive season. Apart from that, I'm really not Christmassy. It's it's kind of sad and depressing and really not really lighthearted or anything. I'd give that a miss over the Christmas season. Just watch it as a general movie. It's a good movie, but yeah. 
Now this one is one of, if not, my absolute favourite Christmas movie of all time, and that is Chevy Chase in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is the one that we watch every Christmas day. This movie is fantastic, hilarious. Not just one of the best Christmas movies ever made, but one of the best comedies ever made. Chevy Chase as Clark Griswold is fantastic, and uh, this is probably the best addition in the Vacation series. Of course, you've got Randy Quaid in there as Cousin Eddie, who's just an absolute laugh. You have to watch this one. If you just watch one Christmas movie, Christmas Vacation. Next one, Christmas with the Cranks. This is one that sort of floats in and out of my lists every year. Uh, some years I feel like it, some years I just feel like I don't want to watch that again. It's a bit of fun. Tim Allen, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's funny, but it's just not one that you can watch over and over and over again. There's some great moments in there, and Tim Allen is fantastic as always. But of course, not Tim Allen's greatest Christmas film. We'll get to that very soon. Next up, Deck the Halls. This is one that I've sort of dropped off my list over the last few years. Matthew Broderick, Danny DeVito. It's fun for a couple of watches, but then it gets very old very, very quickly. It's not that funny. To be honest, it's not really that funny at all. But it's good for a giggle once or twice, just as a novelty movie, if you just want to sort of pat out your pat out your viewing experience. It's worth watching at least once, I'd say, but it's not really a great movie. A couple of unorthodox Christmas movies, but you can't watch Christmas movies without watching these two movies. You just have to, and every cinema lover will agree that these, yes, these definitely are Christmas movies. I know there's a debate every year. It's not a Christmas movie. It is. Trust me, it is. And what is it? Die Hard and Die Hard 2. That's right, they're both set around Christmas. There's guys wearing Christmas hats. There's uh, explosions and... Uh, Everything you want on Christmas, really. Look, it's, these two are so fun, and again, you just have to die hard. At least Die Hard 1 is one that I watch every single year. You cannot miss watching Die Hard every Christmas. It's so fun. Yes, it's a Christmas movie. I love it so much. So check out Die Hard, and Die Hard 2 if you get the time. Usually I do these like a back-to-back -back sort of thing. A lot of fun. Next one is an absolute favourite as well. I have to watch this every single year, and it does not get old. That is, of course, Will Ferrell in ALF. Oh man, I love this movie. This came out uh, when I was in primary school. The last year I was in primary school, we actually went to see this with class, and I've watched it every single year since. It is so fun. Will Ferrell is hilarious, and this was probably the first movie I ever saw Will Ferrell in, and it's so fun and charming. It's just a great family Christmas movie that just anyone can enjoy, whether you're three years old, or you're 103 years old. Everybody loves Elf. This next one up is one that I probably wouldn't imagine appearing on too many people's Christmas lists. Uh, I definitely consider it a Christmas movie. Again, it's another one of these sort of dramedy kind of movies that's more set around the Christmas period than having really a, a Christmassy festive story. It is, of course, Everybody's Fine. This has a stellar cast. Robert De Niro, uh, Drew Barrymore, Sam Rockwell, Kate Beckinsale. It's fantastic, and as it says on the cover, it's heartwarming. Robert De Niro is like an estranged father. He has this huge family, a bunch of kids. And I, I think he's feeling a little bit sad for himself. And he wants to pull his whole family together for the Christmas holidays. Again, it's not really, it doesn't really have a Christmassy story like Elf. But Christmas movies, we sort of, we sort of think of, it doesn't have to be Christmassy. It's just got to have the heart, it's got to have the soul, it's got to be about family, togetherness, love, and just, just being together with, with your family and the people you love. And I think Everybody's Fine does a very, very good job at, at that. I suppose. It's just a really wonderful movie and I would certainly recommend this. I'll probably be watching this again this year because I love it. I love it so much. And again, another one. This one's very, very similar in that it's it's more about family and about being together. It's set around the holiday season and has a little bit of magic involved too. This is a favourite. This has to be watched every single year as well. Is of course Nick Cage in pretty much one of his only decent roles. It is The Family Man. I love this movie so much. This is sort of like a modern reimagining of It's a Wonderful Life. You've got spirit guides in there, you've got time travel, you've got alternate realities, you've got magic. There's a lot about family and a lot about love and just sort of learning your place in the world around the holiday season. And that is what makes a great holiday movie. Nick Cage is fantastic in this. This is the only movie where I can say Nick Cage was actually really, really good. I mean, Nick Cage does a lot of movies that are fun. You sit, you watch them, and you sort of turn your brain off and you enjoy his good, bad acting. This movie, he's actually really, really good in it. I think it's fantastic. You have to watch this. It's a great family movie as well, and The Family Man, definitely. A must, a must watch every holiday season. This next one is a lot of fun. It's not hilarious, it's funny, it's a lot of stupid fun, and you've got to watch it. It is, of course, 
Four Holidays, or as I believe it was called in the States, Four Christmases. You get a lot of movies that have Christmas in the title over in the States, and then when they release it over here in Australia, they change the name Christmas to Holiday. Or they just drop the word Christmas altogether, like bad, a Christmas, what's it called? Bad, a Bad Mum's Christmas has just come out in the States. It's called Bad Mum's 2 over here. They drop the Christmas off the title because I like to put the movie in the cinemas before Christmas and try and leave it in the cinemas a little bit after Christmas as well. And they figure that people in this market don't want to see a Christmas movie before Christmas and don't want to see a Christmas movie after Christmas. Whereas in America, obviously that's that's different. So anyway, Four Christmases got retitled Four Holidays over here in Australia and I'm assuming probably in the UK as well. This one's a lot of fun. Vince Vaughn, Reese Witherspoon. It's really funny. Uh, John Favreau's in this as well and Robert Duvall. They're all hilarious and this is a must watch as well. Just another one of those just, just fun Christmas movies. These two have to visit their four families. They both come from broken homes. They both have to visit uh, their mother and their father each they have four holidays or four Christmases it's a lot of fun you gotta watch this one and another one starring Vince Vaughn this is another one that's sort of uh, you know pick and switch every year where you watch it one year or you don't watch it the next year it's a bit of fun and it's worth watching at least once it is Fred Claus again starring Vince Vaughn and Paul Giamatti Vince Vaughn plays Fred Claus, who is the younger brother of Santa Claus, a bit of a delinquent, he's up to no good. He sort of, I think he goes to the North Pole to visit his brother, Santa Claus. He finds out that Santa is on hard times and needs a little bit of help. So Fred Claus basically comes the new Santa Claus. This has got a great cast as well. Uh, you've got uh, Miranda Richardson, Rachel Weisz, Kathy Bates, and uh, Mr. Kevin Spacey is in that too. <clears throat> Might be giving that one a miss this year. Next up, we have got a couple that I've actually... I don't think I've ever... I've watched the first one once. The second one, I don't think I've ever watched. The first movie is great from memory. I think I might watch it again this year. This is The Gremlins Collection. The Gremlins and Gremlins 2, The New Batch. Is the second one set around Christmas? I'm not sure because I haven't watched it, but the first one definitely is set around Christmas. Kid gets Gremlins for Christmas. He's told, was it don't feed them or something, keep them out of the light. I can't remember because I haven't watched it for a long time, but it's a classic. And uh, I think I might watch that this year. I'm not too sure. Ah, I'm very excited about this because I've watched this every year up until the last couple of years. I sort of started to get a little bit bored of it, but I feel like I'm ready to watch it again this year. And uh, why not? Because I've just sort of upgraded this one. It is, of course, How the Grinch Sold Christmas. Do you, does anyone else remember when this was just called The Grinch? Wasn't this just released as The Grinch when it first came out? I'm sure of it. And then all of a sudden they changed it to How the Grinch Sold Christmas because it's the name of the book. Was it released as How the Grinch Sold Christmas in the US and The Grinch over here and then they changed their minds? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm very excited about that because uh, we're getting rid of this Blu-ray because the transfer on this is crap. And we've upgraded to 4K Ultra HD. So I'm going to watch this in 4K this year. I'm very excited. I do love this movie. Jim Carrey is brilliant in this. I'm a huge fan of Jim Carrey. But I sort of dropped it over the last couple of years because it's just one that just... After repeat, 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 repeat viewings, it sort of loses its charm, it loses its magic. For me anyway, so I dropped it for a couple of years, I'm ready to revisit again this year again in 4K. I'm so excited because the old Blu-ray transfer was terrible. It was washed out, there was no colour, and apparently this is fantastic, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. Hopefully there's lots of colour, hopefully it's crystal clear. Can't wait. This next one is one that I think we've watched a couple of times. It's not great, but it's one that's sort of just pat out your list a little bit to have a little bit of brainless fun. It's another one that's not for the kids. And that is a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. It's a bit of fun for the novelty of the 3D. There's lots of crap flying out of the screen at you, hitting you in the face and stuff. Now, uh, of course, two stoners, Harold and Kumar, getting the munchies again throughout the Christmas season, basically. Bit of fun. This next one is another one that's sort of up for debate. I've been debating people many years who don't believe this is a Christmas movie. I think it is, again, because it's all about love and family and togetherness. And it's set over the Christmas period, or at least the holiday period. Period, and that is The Holiday. I love this movie so much. This has to be watched every single year. Fantastic cast. Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, Jack Black and Jude Law. This is so fun. It's just another just charming, heartwarming movie. And that's what Christmas is all about. Of course, these people, they sort of trade houses for the Christmas period. Uh, one lives in England, one lives in LA. They just sort of swap lives for the holiday season because they just want to get away from everything else. Just have a good, fresh holiday by themselves. But then, of course, things don't quite work out as planned. It's a great rom-com. I love it. And this is a staple of Christmas viewing every year. Yes, it is 
a Christmas movie. These next two are fantastic and these have been favourite since I was a kid. Now most years I watch the first one, sometimes I watch the second one depending on timing. Uh, one year I watched both of them back to back and it was a terrible, terrible idea. They're both practically the, exactly the same movie. They are of course Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. I love these so much! Yeah, I watched them back to back one year and I realised that they were exactly the same movie. It was horrible, I've never done that again. Sometimes I watch this one uh, because I love New York. Ah, uh, just have a real great feel for New York over the Christmas period. I've been there a couple of years over the holidays. Just as they're starting to put up the Christmas decorations, it's just such a beautiful place. It's like the best place to be at Christmas other than maybe Disneyland. And just some years I just I yearn for New York and I have to watch this one. But every year definitely do have to watch Home Alone. Macaulay Culkin gets left home alone two years in a row. It's a bit silly of the parents but it makes for two pretty good movies. Great movie, pretty good movie. This is another one that's sort of uh, one year we'll watch it, one year we won't. It's not one that holds up incredibly well on repeat viewings. It's a great movie. It's charming and as the back cover says, wonderful. This is Michael Keaton in Jack Frost. I love it. I do. I love this movie. Some years I just don't feel in the mood to watch it though. This is fantastic. Michael Keaton is great in this as always. Uh, Michael Keaton dies and he comes back as a snowman. So what else do you need than that? It's fantastic. Again, great family movie. This one is one that I have watched every single year since I was a kid. Even before I started sort of Christmas. Christmas marathons and all this stuff. This was the one movie I would always watch on Christmas Eve and I still do every Christmas Eve. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in Jingle All The Way. That was terrible. This is like German. Jeez, I'll never do that again. Jingle All The Way, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jake Lloyd before he, uh, he became Anakin Skywalker. This movie is so fun. It's not a great movie. I acknowledge that. It's not a very good movie, but it's so much fun. It's just brainless fun, and I love it. I can't get enough of it. Another very unorthodox Christmas movie in the same vein as Die Hard. There's Christmas songs, there's Christmas trees, and there's lots of explosions and, and action. And you gotta watch it. It's Lethal Weapon, Mel Gibson, Danny Glover. You gotta love Lethal Weapon, these movies are so fun. Unlike Die Hard, only the first Lethal Weapon is a Christmas movie. It's set over the Christmas period. You know, that's all I need for a Christmas movie. Now another one in the same vein as The Holiday. I've been arguing with so many people over this that this movie, yes, it's a Christmas movie. I reckon they play this on TV every like February, March, or April, sort of the beginning of the year. And it does my head in because I'm like, it's a Christmas movie. Why are you playing this? It's not Christmas. I don't know, a lot of people don't seem to have a problem with that, but I do, because it's definitely a Christmas movie. And that is Love Actually. Oh, I love it. Again, huge star-studded cast. This is probably, next to Notting Hill, my favourite rom-com of all time. I just love it. Another charming, beautiful movie. Great cast. Hugh Grant, Liam Neeson, Colin Firth, Laura Linney, Emma Thompson, Alan Rickman, Kira Knightley, uh, Bill Nye, Rowan Atkinson, and you've got uh, Martin Freeman in there as well, uh, and, and a couple of other people as well who just aren't mentioned on the cover. You've got a whole ton of people in this. It's just so fun. Richard Curtis is one of my favourite writer-directors. Love, actually. It's set over the Christmas period. It's about people at Christmas coming together at Christmas. It's a Christmas movie, and you have to watch it every Christmas. I know I do. This next one is not great and I probably will not watch it ever again. Uh, the only saving grace of this movie was Robin Williams. In fact, I think this is, is this his last movie or one of his last movies. A Merry Christmas Miracle. I believe this was released in the States as A Merry Frickin' Christmas. Uh, Robin Williams, Joel McHale, uh, Lauren Graham's in this as well, Clark Duke, Oliver Platt. I can't even, to be honest, I can't even remember what it's about. I've watched it once, that's it. Don't bother with it unless, you know, you're looking for something for the family because it's a, you know, it's a family flick. Kids will probably like it. I did not. This one is one of my favourites of all time. So beautiful, so magical. And this is the one movie that really, truly makes you believe. Not just in the Christmas season, but in Santa Claus himself. And that is, of course, Miracle on 34th Street. This is one of the first Christmas movies I just fell in love with as a kid. And I watched it every single year for as long as I can remember. I adore this movie so, so much. Uh, of course, a John Hughes production. He didn't direct it, but he produced it. And he wrote the screenplay for this. And... Just a beautiful movie. Just in, tra in the tradition of those great John Hughes comedy, heartfelt sort of comedy drama movies. I, I just, I can't, I can't sing my praises for this movie enough. This is uh, about a uh, shopping mall Santa Claus who turns out to be the real deal, or does he? Of course, this is a remake of the classic 1947 Miracle on 34th Street, and uh, it's one of the only cases where I can say the remake is as good as the original. And in most years, I find it really hard to decide which version I want to watch. Usually, I watch both of them, because I just I just love them both. Miracle on 34th Street, and it's great family viewing too. You, ha you have to watch that one. It's just beautiful. 
This one was a new one for last year, so I've only watched it once. Uh, probably make it on the list this year, I'm not too sure. The Night Before, Seth Rogen, Anthony Mackie and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It was a lot of fun from memory, really funny, and, and just, just a good fun. Again, a bit of a naughty Christmas movie, not for the kids. You know, you can make a great marathon of just really just adult Christmas movies. Night Before, Bad Santa, Harold and Kumar. That'll be a fun night, actually. But there you go, the night before, that was a bit of fun. This one, again, talking about unorthodox Christmas movies. This isn't an Aussie film. Uh, it's probably not one that everyone would want to watch. Again, it's, um... It's set at Christmas time, but it doesn't really tend to be very festive. In fact, it's very, very, very depressing. Again, Australian movie, it's called Noise. Starring one of my favorite Australian actors, Brendan Cowell. He's a policeman and he's been suffering with noise, basically tinnitus. His ears are ringing and it's, look, it's sort of a heartwarming movie because it's, he's, he's depressed, he's traumatized, but he's sort of finding his way through the holiday season. It's, it's pretty touching, but it's, again, it's really dark. Probably not one that you're going to want to watch every Christmas. I know I certainly don't, but it's a really fantastic movie. It's one of my favourite Australian movies ever made. It's definitely worth a watch once, even if you don't watch it around Christmas time. This is the one I'll sort of, I'll forgive you if you, you watch it outside of Christmas. It's the one I hate. This one I hate. I don't hate a lot of movies, but I hate this movie. Polar Express. In three, this creeps me out. It's that whole uncanny valley thing, you know, it's the motion capture thing. It sits in between being really realistic and being really fake and sort of blending of the lines that just makes it like, oh, it's cringy, it's creepy. I can't, I can't watch this movie. I hate it. This one's a lot of fun. I think I dropped this off the list last year, but it's probably going to work its way back on again because I miss it. I really do. Bill Murray, who's always a lot of fun, in Scrooge. This is a, sort of a comedy take on uh, Christmas Carol, which is my fav one of my favorite stories of all time, let alone one of my favorite Christmas stories. It's a, yeah, sort of a modern, modern-ish, I mean, this is like 1980s. Uh, sort of 1980s reimagining of, um, uh, he's a TV exec, he doesn't care about too many people, and he gets visited by the three ghosts of Christmas, past, present, and yet to come. And it's just a good, fun comedy ride. Uh, you'll love this if you love Bill Murray, you just love, like, 1980s comedies. Another one! In the same vein of Love Actually and the Holiday, where it could pass the Christmas movie, maybe not. The beginning is set at Christmas, the end is set at Christmas, the middle of the movie really isn't. But it's sort of based around the relationship between these two people, John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. It is, of course, serendipity. Based around their relationship, they sort of come in and out of each other's lives. Sort of around the Christmas season. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend this. Got a couple more here. Uh, this one is one that, again, touch and go. It's Surviving Christmas. Ben Affleck, James Gandolfini, Christina Applegate. I enjoy it. I think it's a bit of fun. It's funny. Not hilarious. It's rated M, but I think this would be suitable for families on, on the most part. It says on the back, genuine fun. But I would say, I would agree with that. It is genuine fun. Maybe not repeat viewings, but worth watch. And this is one that I always ha I always forget to Christmas movie and always manage to leave off my viewing schedule every year. Uh, but I think this year it might make its way back on the list. Just to have an excuse to watch it again because I haven't watched this movie in years. It's a John Landis movie so you know it's got to be a lot of fun. Training Places, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. One of my favourite Eddie Murphy scenes ever is in this movie. I love Eddie Murphy. This is so fun. But they trade places. Eddie Murphy is a hobo. Uh, Dan Aykroyd is this really rich guy. And they trade places for the holiday season. It's great. I would recommend watching this movie. Again, I'll let you get off if you watch this when it's not Christmas. Because again, I always forget that this is a Christmas movie. But it's great, so you got to watch it. Okay, so now let's go through just a couple of the Disney Christmas movies. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about this. If you're interested in hearing about these in depth, I've done a Disney Christmas movie video last year. I'll put a link for that right at the end of the video and down in the description below if you'd like to uh, check out some of these in more detail. We got some movies, we got some specials. Let's take a look at the movies first. Santa Claus Trilogy, absolutely love. Well, at least the first one I love so much. It's a staple of every single Christmas year. Babes in Toyland, this is a classic. Like, I think, I think, this was the very first live action musical Disney ever made. A Christmas Carol, again, I love the story of A Christmas Carol. This is a Jim Carrey version, motion capture. This is one where the motion capture, they did it quite well. I can actually handle the motion capture in this movie. I love it. This one I'm not a huge fan of, The Nightmare Before Christmas. I didn't grow up with this movie. I never watched it as a kid, so I always feel like that's sort of the reason why I don't really love it as much as some people do. This one is a definite watch every year. I'll be home for Christmas. DVD only, I have this. I love this so much. Uh, oh, and another version of The Christmas Carol right here, The Muppet Christmas Carol. This is another great version of Christmas Carol. Love it so much. Much. No Muppet Christmas movie here. There's a very merry Muppet Christmas movie. Mm, didn't really enjoy this one. This is pretty 
average. Kids will love it, but I don't really think I'll go out of my way to watch that again. Got a couple of Mickey Mouse Christmas uh, movies here. Mickey's Christmas Carol. Very good uh, adaptation of a Christmas Carol. And then, of course, there's Mickey's Once Upon and Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. This is a great sort of anthology movie of just little Christmas shorts. Kids will love it. I have a soft spot for Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas because I grew up watching that as a kid. But otherwise, I, again, I don't go out of my way to watch either of them. What I do go out of my way to watch are these wonderful Disney Christmas shorts. These are great shorts from, you know, the 19th. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. They've released so many collections of Disney Christmas shorts. These are the two that I've bought because most of them sort of overlap. Uh, these are the two that I felt offered the, the greatest range of Disney Christmas shorts. Again, if you want to know more about them, check out my Disney Christmas movie video. Uh, and this is one that I sort of passed. Uh, I, I've only watched this like, once or twice. Beauty and the Beast, the Enchanted Christmas. It's not a huge favourite. I know it's a fan favourite among a lot of Disney fans. It's just not one that I, that I go out of my way to watch. And uh, Winnie the Pooh, a very Merry Poo year. I really didn't enjoy this one. I love the Winnie the Pooh theatrical movies, but some of these like short ones or straight to DVD movies really are aimed at a really younger, younger audience. I think it's great for kids, but I just, yeah, I, I just, I'm not a, not a big fan of that one. A couple of other Disney shorts. I've never actually watched these. I only imported these last year. The two Prep and Landing shorts. These look great. Apparently they're really, really good and really funny. So I think I might watch them this year at some point. They're only 20 minutes long, so they're worth worth a, worth checking out. All of those Disney Christmas movies I go over in complete detail in my Disney Christmas movie video. So please check that out if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about them. Before we get on to the classic movies, let's uh, while we're on uh, like family entertainment, cartoons and stuff, this is one I picked up a few years ago and I love it. I have to watch these. These are my favourites of my, my dad actually. Dad loved these when he was growing up and as a kid. It is the Peanuts Holiday Collection. So this one's got not just Christmas shorts but it's got uh, like Easter shorts, Thanksgiving shorts and stuff in there too. I think it's brilliant. I love these shorts so much. Uh, the two Christmas ones on this, uh, it's, it's uh, a Charlie Brown Christmas and it's Christmas time again Charlie Brown. I love them. You have to watch them every Christmas. These are like the quintessential Christmas specials. This set has just been released on 4K as well. Uh, I haven't imported it. I, I don't feel the need to upgrade this. I don't imagine how much better it would be in 4K. You can also buy them individually in either Blu-ray or 4K if you just want the Christmas one. And if I did ever get around to sort of upgrading that, if I got a good price, maybe the Christmas one would be the only one I'd get in 4K, just for the sake of just checking out some animation, some classic animation in 4K. Now we're rounding out the video now. Uh, this is, as I said, it's been a very long one. We have got a very small stack here of classic Christmas movies. You know, I just adore my classic cinema. Classic Hollywood is just, oh, just beautiful. And there's something that's just a little bit better than classic cinema, and that's classic Christmas cinema. Some classic Christmas movies that I adore so much and I go out of my way every year to watch as many of these as I can. Firstly, The Bishop's Wife, starring Cary Grant, uh, David Niven, I think, and uh, Loretta Young. He's an archangel and he comes uh, to, to visit this, comes to visit this priest who's having hard times over Christmas, sort of helps him through. It's not, not a literal adaptation of A Christmas Carol, but it's got that sort of same feel, that real fantastical, really beautiful feel. That's really, really fantastic. You have to watch that one. Okay, now we've got a couple of versions of A Christmas Carol. As I said, I've got so many versions of this. I just I sort of have to pick and choose which one I watch every year. This is one of the very first versions ever made, 1938, starring Reginald Owen as Ebenezer Scrooge. This is a quite a decent version of it, really good version of it and this is the George C. Scott version from uh, 1984. It's not as good I didn't think. I think I've only watched this one once. I did enjoy it I just just because I love the story. Uh, this wouldn't be my preferable version of it. I mean I would always watch this or the Muppets one or the Jim Carrey one over this one. Uh, but yeah that's an option. This is one I never watched once. Barbara Stanwyck Christmas in Connecticut. It's just one that, that I didn't I didn't fall in love with. It's one that didn't really do it for me. Uh, but it was a good movie and a nice nice little movie. And if you like Barbara Stanwyck, I'm sure you'll really love this. Talking about great connections though, this next one I am absolutely in love with. In, in fact, the next few I am absolutely in love with. Of course, Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire, Holiday Inn. Oh, I love this so much. It's so wonderful, so charming. Uh, it's another one of those ones that isn't necessarily just a Christmas movie. I mean, it's set at all these different holidays. They open up this uh, hotel that is only open on holidays. It's an Irving Berlin movie and the interesting thing is that it's a couple of songs that were actually featured in this movie would go on to inspire their own movies. White Christmas was one of them, which you'll see very, very soon, and Easter Parade was another. So both of those songs featured in this and then later spun off 
their own movies. And of course, as we were speaking about, White Christmas. Oh man, I love this so much. Of course, Bing Crosby's back in this one. Danny Kaye, Rosemary Clooney, who uh, is the grandmother of George Clooney, or the great aunt of George Clooney, I believe. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, you've got Vera Allen in there as well. I love this one so much. This is a staple as well. Again, it's one that doesn't take place entirely at Christmas, but the bookends are at Christmas. It's just a very Christmassy feel movie. Just great feel-good film. You've got to watch that one too. I love it so much. Now, this next one is just one of the best Christmas movies ever made. I watch this one every Christmas day as well. I just adore it so much. Cannot sing my praises for this one enough. It is Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life, starring, of course, James Stewart, who I adore as well. I love Frank Capra's movie so much, as you will know. I love Jimmy Stewart so much as well. And this movie is just so heartwarming, so touching, so beautiful. It's about being together. It's about finding your place in this world and, and just loving yourself around Christmas and loving family and everything. If you're not a huge fan of black and white movies, there's a colorized version on the Blu-ray, and I believe the DVD is a colorized version too. Not my preferable way of viewing it, but if you prefer to watch things in colour, that's an option. I love it. Please watch that movie. Please. Next up, Miracle on 34th Street. I spoke about this earlier. I spoke about the remake. This is the original version. Of course, starring a very, very young Natalie Wood. I love this too. Again, I love the remake and the original just as much as each other. There's a couple of other versions as well. There's a couple of like TV versions. They're really... I've never watched either of them, but this one and the, the remake of that are really beautiful. I love them so much. Edmund Gwen portrays Santa Claus in this and his portrayal is fantastic, as good as, as Richard Attenborough's performance. So please watch that one too. Here's just a couple of Christmas movie collections that I've got. Uh, four film favorite classic holiday collection. Whoa, it's got four uh, decent movies on here. All mine to give. I think I only watched that once. It's not one that I just felt a great connection to. It Happened on Fifth Avenue is fantastic. That is a must watch. Uh, it's all these down in their luck people and they move into this house of a rich guy over the Christmas holidays. They find out that his house is vacant over the Christmas holidays, over, over a bunch of months over Christmas, and uh, they sort of go in and they sort of live in his house for the Christmas period. It's just so wonderful, so charming, beautiful. You gotta watch it if you can get your hands on this. I mean, it's incredible. It's such just a touching movie. Also on here, we've got Holiday Affair, which is a Robert Mitchum and Janet Lee. Again, I only watched that once. I didn't really feel much for that, even though I love both the actors in that. Uh, and Blossoms in the Dust, uh, Greer Garson, and Walter Pigeon. That's one I, I actually don't think I ever watched. Uh, two Humphrey Bogart ones, uh, We're No Angels. Uh, is the Christmas movie in this. It didn't feel very Christmassy to me, so I only watched it one Christmas, but I love Humphrey Bogart. He's my favourite actor of all time. And then here we go. We have got the James Stewart T Turner Classic Movies Great. Greatest Classic Legends Film Collection. There's only one Christmas movie in this, and that's The Shop Around the Corner, which I love, I adore, I think it's fantastic. That would later go on to be remade as You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. I love both movies, but this one's the real Christmassy one. Love it so much. James Stewart, again, is just fantastic in this. And if It's a Wonderful Life is not enough, James Stewart, for your Christmas watching, you're going to watch this one too, definitely. That's everything! That's all of them! I've gone through all of them! It's taken a while. I told you it was going to take a while, but we got there in the end, and uh, I'm really happy that I've done this video finally. As you can see, I've been holding all of these off this entire time so I could sit down and just discuss these Christmas movies. So I hope I've given you a, a sort of a good idea of what Christmas movies are out there that I really love. I know there's a whole lot of other sort of family movies and uh, like Hallmark Christmas movies. There's so, so many Christmas movies. I just love the classics. I've got so many of these classic ones and just really traditional Christmas movies that everyone's just got to watch. So hopefully I've helped you in picking a few movies. Uh, again, uh, if you want to know more about the Disney Christmas movies, please, at the end of the video, there'll be a little hyperlink there to check out the Disney Christmas movies video uh, and also again in a couple of days time I'm going to be putting up a video which is me talking about how I schedule my Christmas movie list every year I don't just put them on willy-nilly I have a rhyme and a reason to it many years up until last year I would do every single day leading up to Christmas in December but uh, recently last year and I think this year we're going to be scaling back to 12 days so if you want to find out 
what I'm watching this year, how I schedule it. If you want to put together your own schedule, then please tune in for that video as well. I'm excited to showcase that as well. So that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a first time viewer to this channel and you like what you've seen, you'd like to see some more, then please do me a big solid and give me some support. After the jump, hit subscribe. To all my regular viewers out there, thank you once again for joining me. To absolutely everybody out there, have a safe, happy and happy Christmas and holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And I hope I'll see you again soon. Until next time though guys, take care and I hope you have a Merry Christmas.